Welcome to September. Or September. Hi, I'm Leanne from the Midnight Farmhouse. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. It's free to do so, and I have wonderful content on my channel. I'm participating in a collaboration put on by the Beals. Each day this month, there'll be a new soup recipe, and you'll want to go see all these YouTubers and their videos. I'll leave links below to all their cha wonderful channels, and go ahead and subscribe to their channels. And there'll be a prize given at the end of the month. She's going to pick a day, and then she'll pick a comment from that particular day at random. Why did I pick French onion soup? Because it's good, wholesome ingredients that you can easily get from a farm or local. And in this day and age, you really want to try to eat local because it's so fresh and you know where it's come from. It, French onion soup is a staple in my house because, well, French onion soup is good on its own with cheese and fresh baked bread. And it's good for a base and beef stroganoff and other fine dishes. You can make French onion chicken and loose meat sandwiches is a hit in my house. You just grind up some beef and pour a little bit of that French onion soup in there and let it simmer for about a half hour and let it reduce a little bit. Then add some raw onion and some melted cheese on top of that and put that on a soft roll. Ugh, it is so good. Like I'm hungry for one right now. You can make French onion soup gluten-free by not having any bread on the side, of course. You can make it dairy-free by sauteing your onions in olive oil and using um, nutritional yeast on as a topping. And if you find value in this video, please give me a like and subscribe to my channel. It will really be appreciated. And how do you eat your French onion soup? What kind of cheese do you put on? We're gonna try Avarti today and maybe Gouda tomorrow. Maybe not, but let's get started. Each batch of French onion soup requires seven medium onions peeled and cut in half and cut into quarter inch slices. And you will wanna saute that in two tablespoons of butter per batch. I'm making three batches today because I feel like I'm superwoman some days. Where does my love of French onion soup come from? Last year, I planted at least five to six pounds of onions. So we ended up with at least 50 pounds of onions. And I had to figure out how to preserve them without them going to waste. So I dehydrated some. Then I started watching YouTube channels and I came across the Needy Homesteaders video on French onion soup. Heather inspired me to want to make this just by how in her 30 minute video of how much she wanted to have French onion soup for supper and she just talks and talks about how good it was and I never had French onion soup before and so she inspired me to can French onion soup. And when we opened that first jar, it's been love ever since. When you finish chopping your onions, you want to just keep stirring and stirring so they don't get black on the sides there on the oven roaster. Ask me how I know. <laughs> but you want to get them translucent, which might take, depending on how many onions you have in there, maybe 20 to 30 minutes. Just, just remember to keep stirring. So, so far, we have our beef broth that I've made myself in here, and we have better than bouillon to make up for the lack of product that I have for our beef broth. Then I have some garlic better than bouillon. So now, each batch needs three-fourths of a teaspoon of garlic powder. 
So with everything going on, I couldn't think of how much it was. So now I can do the math and it's two and a quarter teaspoons of garlic. And I also forgot to film here where I put a couple dashes of Worcestershire sauce. And I'm hoping I pronounced that right. <laughs> so each batch needs two teaspoons of steak sauce. And we are a um, A1 family. All right, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Two teaspoons of salt for each one. Can you tell I can't do math on the fly? <laughs> All right. Just to bring this to a boil. Okay, we are ready to can. I got my onions caramelized, my beef broth boiled, so we know that's nice and hot, and I got my canner on. And I'm starting to learn not to put white vinegar in the water because it's supposed to mess up your rings. So I rather just wipe my jars with the vinegar while they're out of the canner than have my rings get messed up. Granted, we won't say that we have two totes worth of rings up in the attic, but you know. So I'm set up, ready to go here. The original recipe says to, when you're making one batch, to divide the onions between the five jars. Well. I'm an overachiever, so I'm going to estimate we're going to put three-fourths of a cup of onions in each jar, or maybe a half. We'll do a half and see what happens. And be careful not to burn yourself. That might be key, since we're using a turkey roaster. space on all these. trying to hurry to get done because we have plans to go away tonight. Church members are getting together to freeze corn for a family that lost two freezers last week. Among a lot of other things that happened to them last week all at once. I won't go into too much detail but the church is definitely coming together to help these people out. Because they do a lot of missionary work themselves. And yeah, we're all pulling together for them. Take your utensil and just stir it. It might help. All right. Now wash my lids with soapy, soapy water. Is how I store my rings. And into the canner we'll go. 
about home canned soup. It's 9.30 at night and we just got home from a long trip of hauling oats and now I can just simply open up the jar, turn the stove on, and in five minutes we have hot soup. And I'm going to grate some cheese here. You always want to rinse out your jar after you've opened it just because I've had so many things dry tight that are hard to clean. Very good. Well, thanks for visiting the farmhouse today. I hope you come back and visit me soon. And here's some other great videos you might enjoy. God bless.